And we are back with a new episode. Today I have very special guest. I'm sure you guys have seen him blow up all over social media in Dubai recently for the past three months. Fernina, thanks a lot for coming on the show. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It means a lot. Uh, you have a beautiful story. Uh, it relates to a lot of us and the viewers in the show where we say like everyone can make it. It doesn't matter where you come from, what you will do as long as you put the effort. So tell us more. Take us back to your childhood. <laughs> Let's know before everything else, how did it all start? Yeah, I will try to, you know, for each podcast, make a little, little bit more information every time. So it's different. So it's a bit exclusive for I'll you. Keep, you know? I'll keep you for two, three hours then. Perfect. We will take as much as possible. <laughs> Perfect. So, um, so yeah, no, I, I would say that at that time when I was a child and I was very happy before my puberty, um, everything was perfect. And I was bubbling like I am now and uh, just smiling on my face, forgiving, loving. But when I turned into puberty, it was um, like a revelation, you know, it was like, my God, the life that is showed to me is, is not a life that I want to live for many different reasons and uh, with my parents, with the place I was living in. So I don't know if that happened to you, but I know a bit of your story as well, Anthony. What happened is that I forget about myself and I was like, I'm going to do and make money. I'm going to leave that place. I'm going to make it for what I thought was making it at the time did master in business, which I didn't love, but I was very good at it. Like when the why is big enough, the how is easy. So massively good at my master degree and then became managers of eight online gambling websites in Malta. And that was my moment of where I completely switched and I was starting my new, my new journey as you meet me now. But it was a long trip. It was a long way. Definitely it is just, I just wanted to know that your triggering point in life where you felt that everything is not relatable or it's not yeah. clicking. So how did it hit you in the face? Because everyone got a slap in the face and each one differently. So I want to Absolutely. know when you felt like, yeah, all what I'm doing is useless or it's not giving me pleasure or, or, or achievements. So how it goes? I wish I could be proud of that, actually. It was when I was 26 and I... I I didn't have this self-revelation. That's the worst part because people now, they look at me like, oh my God, Ferdinand, you understand something? You had a revelation? No, no, no. I was full on, my head in the sand and going even deeper. And fortunately, I had the blessing that my cousin, which was the only person of my life at that time that I was relating to, he started to do breast work. And he was just telling me to do it as well in order to get out of my hole and uh, one step after another. And then I started to spend the, all the money I had into like expeditions and workshops to learn until I became certified. And, and that was my way out. But Anthony, I swear, like I'm looking at you, I have no pride of the way I realized that I had to do change because it took me so long. You will never have pride. And it doesn't matter how much you will accomplish. You will never feel you're satisfied mm, mm. because you're on a different vibration. Mm. You're on a different calling. So it will never happen. So that's why you're going to keep working until and trying to achieve for the for the rest of your life. I'm giving it to you from now. I I'm, I'm a bit now. older than you. I'm a bit <laughs> older than you, but I'm like, trust me, whatever you will do, it's always going to be there. Can we say that your surrounding that time was not inspiring you or making you feel like, yeah, I'm okay what I'm doing until your cousin came up with this something new? I will quote, I will quote you at the same time. <laughs> I think you said something like uh, you were in a surrounding that made you feel that you achieved something, even yeah. though you were achieving it made nothing. me feel okay. Exactly. I'm quoting the man at his own <laughs> podcast and I haven't read the book yet, but I will uh, take charge, by the way, guys, the link right below. Um, <laughs> Yes, that was the case. It's like I felt like a king when I was just the worst piece of shit. And okay. um, at some point, this I realized in terms of money, for example, when I was realizing that everyone was like bragging and brawling about nothing. I'm like, no, guys, this is just not right. Like Internet starting to come to my life as well. And I, I'm a seeker. You know, I love to, to check stuff. And I'm like, no, but this is not life. Like people are doing stuff. Why me? I'm just into this threshold. There is a way. Like, I have two hands. I'm not too dumb. Um, I think I can do something. I'm not a tree. I have feet. If this is not a productive place, let me go look for one. I move. I'm seeking for answers. And uh, the thing is, like, because of this past that gave me... And at that time, I was putting the blame on that. 
uh, alcoholism. I was really drinking a lot. And this kept me down for so long. It made me lost a lot of time. A lot of people that came for my life to help me and to love me, I just pushed them away or I wasn't able to love them back because I was not drinking in a good way. And I'm not against alcohol, guys. Enjoy you were it. detached emotionally because totally. like once your body is screwed, your, money, your mind is screwed. Once your mind is screwed, your soul is screed. This is chapter one, by the way, in the book, <laughs> The Trinity of Success. You will love it. Anthony, yeah. we cannot relate to the book every two sentences. It's not possible. <laughs> Yes, I know the feeling. Yeah, I know when someone is not sober, doesn't have the full mental capability, yes. it will affect their soul. And once your soul is affected, you're kind of dead, you're a corpse. Absolutely. You don't have a meaning, you don't have a purpose. And alcohol, we call that a spirit, because it takes the spirit, it eats the spirit, absolutely. I think alcohol is the most illegal poison on the planet. And uh, it's just like, I would love for it to, to vanish and disappear, especially in the West where I see people over abuse it and yeah. it kind of destroys life. You're from uh, Lebanon? I'm from Lebanon. How is it over there? Uh, listen, like most of the people drink, you know what I mean? But it's not to the level where they have to do it on a daily basis, where we see it mainly in the UK, yeah. where it's like 6 p.m. is the pint time, it's fixed, it's like, yeah, it's a culture. Yeah, I don't see it like when I go to 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 Germany where they order a beer at eight a.m. Yes. It's not like that over there. But just kind of people like they. Okay, let me put it this way: they drink to celebrate. They don't drink to forget. Mm. And there's a huge difference between the two. Mm, exactly. I drink to celebrate. I'm not much of a drinker. Maybe I'll have few glasses per month. But when I drink, it's like to celebrate something with friends and family. I don't drink so I can forget how bad my week was yeah. and <laughs> preparing myself for the one coming. So yeah, let's Absolutely. put it this way. They drink to celebrate. They don't drink to forget. And I think this is a very good point. It's like, it is not about the what, it is about the how. And this applies for absolutely everything in life. And I feel like alcohol is a good metaphor. Um, Let's enjoy, you know, like, let's enjoy what life is, is proposing and giving us. But at the end of the day, we are the master. And that's what happened. It's like when I realized at 26, 27, because it was a journey, that actually, oh, OK, I'm not a victim, actually. I'm responsible of everything that is happening to me. This is when I started to slowly, very slowly, to drop a bit my ego. And I'm not against the ego again. It is not about the what, it's about the how. But I had to drop it a bit and started to call my parents, please forgive me. I'm sorry. I'm truly sorry. I love you. I saw you did your best. I saw that er you gave me unconditional love. What a price. I mean, there's so many child that didn't have this chance. They don't, don't even know their parents. Imagine. Imag I cannot even, I, I can only imagine it. You give me goosebumps. But I had this unconditional love. And I know now they're listening, my, my mama, my papa. Shout out. Yeah, <laughs> shout out to you. Please follow them on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you have Instagram, but uh, like, yeah, they, they give me unconditional love. And I think it's the biggest price gift I can receive ever. Definitely. Yeah. So you so you left the blame mentality that it was your parents, your country, exactly. your village, your yes. city, wherever Absolutely. you come from. And it's like you, you decided to take action, as we say, and move forward. OK, you have done your, your breast work, the exercises, the, the, um, the camps, all of this. What made you come to Dubai and why Dubai out of everywhere on the planet? <laughs> so I will, I will reply to the second question first. Um, when I was a child, I always, I was like, okay, if I am a god and I had to create a city, what is a city, you know? I would create it like Las Vegas, but without alcohol and without gambling. Yeah. And somehow I may not have been the only one thinking that because Dubai pop up and basically it's, Gambling is coming, but uh, it's basically almost no alcohol and almost no gambling, and it's 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 a show. It's a show, Dubai. And what happened is like I was doing really good in Europe, but I felt that I was in a. I started to be a big fish in a small bowl, actually. And I saw this city, and I'm like, okay, let's do one event. Let's see, let's see how it is. And it was January 23. I did my first event. It was a massive success oh, wow, in that's Dubai. that's still fresh. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm a baby here. <laughs> okay. And uh, and I came, and then I said to my team, guys, we have to come. We, it's, there is no way. Like and they were like, okay, Ferdinand, but let's take it slow. Let's see. So we came back in May. We did three events. We crushed it. Then in June, then September, we finally moved here. Got June. the visa. 
I'm, I'm, what I'm temperature fresh. was like 45, 50 <laughs> humidity? <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. I had the rain. I had the super hot weather. I got it all, but it was. It was a way to go, and I'm so happy to be here. Oh, that's amazing. Tell us, like, uh, something that happened with you where it kind of influenced your career and it drove you to to make a difference you know that that kind of experiences or something yeah. that happened which triggered and let me tell you why i'm asking you this why i'm so happy that i got to meet you for multiple reasons like uh of the audience some people see me and they were like oh yeah all of you emiratis have money i'm like okay first of all that's not true Number two, I'm not Emirati. I'm Lebanese. I don't have much preference in here. You know what I mean? So it's like someone coming from Europe, from France, from a total different... We're, we're kind of like the opposite in every kind of aspect, but we have what is common. It's the mindset. So, yeah, that's why I want to know all of these triggering points because for my audience listening, it doesn't matter if you're into finances, corporate, lifestyle, health, uh, lifestyle, whatever it is, as long as you put your proper stuff, you're going to make it. I love that. I, I will, uh, there's many, many things to catch from that. Um, the trigger points, there, there has been many. There have yeah. been many breakthroughs. Um, the first one was like really reconnecting with my feelings um, because I felt like I was just doing business to do business and it was meaning nothing. And once I reconnected to my feelings and my emotions, this is when start, things started to make sense. It was a slow process, but it worked. And then it was more than that. It was not only reconnecting with my feelings, but being able to being vulnerable to others. And then it became even further. It's every emotion that can be felt can be transcended through actions in two different directions, something constructive or something destructive. For example, anger, it's science. It says that it can be transcended through heat, heat and movement. So you can basically, you choose, you can hit your wife or you can go to the gym. One is destructive and negative for you and for your environment. The other one is constructive. So once I had this logic, I'm like, okay, every emotion, I'm a very sensitive man. And that thing, that's why also when I was young, I cut it, all these emotions, because I could just not take it. I'm like, okay, each emotion can be transcended in something constructive. Sadness, the same. Doubt, fear, um, shame, grief, whatever. And the downs were a bit less down, the ups were a bit more ups. So to reply to your questions, most of my revelations were, were during uh, workshops and expeditions. Um, otherwise, I had uh, the chance to be for a moment with a shaman girl that opened many doors inside of me. It was difficult work, but I could have not stay with her for a lifetime. But Milena, I love you. I, uh, <laughs> we work together next week, actually. We see each other next week. But uh, it, it, it was during the, the meeting with new people. I had to meet new people, different people, and people that slap you very hard spiritually in the face. Can I know more about this shaman experience? You know, I'm not that uh, well uh, educated when it comes to that field, but I know that most of them, they are it's like in a very high position when it comes to spirituality, and they will take you on, and they will do some kind of... Uh, so ceremonies, I, or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I, so... Guys, you have to understand that I'm not the best at this neither. I, uh, I'm it's general information. We're yes. just getting to know. It's so okay. from what I know is that shamans are people that has went through most of the time. It doesn't have to, but most of the time through very, very hard experiences. But like very hard, like something that is... Like the, the things that kind of breaks you. Breaks you and like that most people would have maybe died or killed themselves. Or, so they went super da deep in the darkness. But still alive. And at some point, somehow they start to receive information. They start to receive information from beyond, from wherever channel is happening, God, whatever. So this information, first, sometimes it comes from for them own self, but then it starts to come from others. And without doing anything, or we can also do rituals, they will be able to tell you stuff mm. or make you realize things. And this has changed my life. She changed my life. I'll give you an example. I was not able to see colors. I was colorblind. Really? And I can see colors now. Like, this is crazy. Like, and, and did she cure you through what? So through we were meditation, through silence, you know? It's kind of... Yeah, people want to know. Uh, it's called reprogramming. And basically, it's like you're laying down and she's telling you stuff. 
yeah. and um, she goes into your subconscious brain. Now okay. I'm doing it to people as well. It's, it's very powerful. It's hypnosis. It's kind of hypnosis. It's, um, it's, it's a different way, but it's kind of the same thing. It's like you talk to the subconscious and the unconscious. The difference with hypnosis is that hypnosis, it's, um, it, it's only talking to your subconscious brain through techniques. With her, she's channeling information. So she doesn't have a plan. She doesn't have an intention. And for me, at some point, I go out of this session and I'm looking around me and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, I see the, the sports clothes, the car, the, I remember the McDonald's sign. I'm like, of course people are addicted to McDonald's. Look at the sign, like yellow and red. And it changed my life. The, the Formula One behind you is also yellow and red. Crazy. It changed and my life. And most of the room is blue. It's because it's pure confidence. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful room, by the way. Thank you. So tell me like uh, one kind of event that happened to you and you were like, you know what? I want to impact the world. I don't want to keep it limited to where I am. The worst part is that it came from a really egoistic thing. It's like from after maybe two expeditions, I start to have these revelations on how to feel and how. And I was like, Anthony, I'm looking at you in the eyes. I was like this. I was like, I am Jesus. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> I made it. <laughs> it's like what we call a person lost the plot. That's it. Yeah. Total. Total. And I was like, Here we are, the Messiah, yeah. you know. And then Let me touch you and you will be taller, wider, <laughs> or whatever. Just moving like this, you know. And, uh, and I'm like, My God. But that was the trigger point, at least, you know. And I was like, Okay, people need to feel what I felt. Mm. So that pushed me. And on top of that, uh, my mentor at that time, it was Wim Hof, I still learned from him as well, but uh, I'm moving a bit away. But he had this missionary message, so I was part of this mission. And it helped me a lot to be like, I need to share, happiness has to be shared. Now I step back from this Jesus position <laughs> and I'm just being me and I'm sharing what helped me. And if it resonates with people, I'm happy. And so far, I've trained more than 10,000 participants. Wow. And... Um, People stop smoking, they reconnect with their parents, they reconnect with themselves, they heal traumas, they can have beautiful relationships um, with their kids, with their family, it's with their wives. On top of that, I'm not even talking about all the physical benefits. Like people here, man, we have the most beautiful people in the world, they cannot have an erection. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, women, they cannot have orgasm. Like, this is the base of, of love. It's the, the fundamental, it's the root chakra. It's, in all the books, it's the, the foundation, and people cannot what even manage that. What affects people to reach that point? Is it something, uh, you know, like it's when someone is feeling depressed? or okay. Just give me detail. What yes. can reach, let's say, a person between the age of 25 to 40, which, yes. which they are in their peak, you know, yes. giving, and for them to become like that? Okay. Um, the first step, it has, they have to find a safe space. Okay. And it sounds very easy, but it is not. Sometimes people, they say, yeah, but when I'm home, it still doesn't work. I'm like, what do you mean when you're home? Like when you're home with your wife, where everyone knows you're living there, where everyone can contact you through whatever social media. No, this is not a safe space when you have created a life full of stress. For me, for example, it was when I, when I went out. I had to go in Thailand, for example. And for me, for example, a safe space, we talk about car a lot. Car for me is a safe space. I had a lot of revelations in my car doing some kind of rituals or meditation. So find a safe space because this is the foundation once again. We can talk through the vocabulary of spirituality or the vocabulary of science. It is the same thing. When you are into a state of fully safe, the physiology inside is changing, the hormones, the nervous system. So that's why when my participants, they come to me, sometimes they're like, my God, I cry. We haven't even started yet because I, my whole job is to make them feel safe. And sometimes I haven't felt safe since 20 years. Look, look, Anthony, I don't know about you yet. I haven't asked you any question. But of course you are a master in what you do. You're a master of yourself. You're a master of many people here. A lot of responsibilities. Um, you probably, you are married. Yeah. So you have a family. You have a lot on your shoulders. Someone like you, and I know most of, most of your audience may be in the same situation. You will have to find someone to give the keys of the car. For a moment, it can be an hour, it can be a week, it doesn't matter. Someone that you trust, that you know that you can break down and tell them all your secrets and, and most dirtiest part of yourself, and they will take care of you and not judge you. This is the first step. Then we built on that because first, 
it's something that you cannot con choose consciously, Anthony. It's something that you will have to feel. It's called the first breakthrough when you are safe. Technically, emotions start to come. And when emotions start to come, we, start, we can start to see what are the traumas, what are the issues of the past, and we can work on it after. But that's the first layer. Um, it works differently on people that press work, right? Each person has a different reaction. So because I believe... The yeah, first time I've done it, that I, it was uh, so weird, you know? <laughs> I, but the, the sounds that was next to me, I'm like, okay, is this really <laughs> happening? <laughs> you know, like, when I did it the first time, I, di I did breath work and I'm like, this is trash. The first time I did it, I was like, this is pointless. I, I, I hate that stuff. Let's tell the, 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 the audience a bit about it, whoever doesn't yeah. know. So the breath work, basically, the one that I've had, uh, they make you sleep, let's say, on the floor and you kind of close your eyes and you start taking four in and taking it out very slowly, which will help you kind of, uh, let's say if you have a high blood pressure or whatever, it will help you to make your body calmer. If someone is going through an anxiety or a panic attack, if they will know how to do it, it's very nice to keep the breath. And then you start taking more and holding more into it. And if you reach a point where you can be doing this for four or five minutes, you feel like you're kind of floating on, on the land which is also a bit weird. Um, there is no drugs involved and this no, is purely no, no. like yes. breast work. But I was listening to sounds of women crying. There was a lot of women crying and there was lots of women giving the sounds of an orgasm. Yes, <laughs> so yes, I was yes, looking yes, like, like no. what happened? <laughs> <laughs> a spirit came and started raping everyone? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Good point. It's, it does happen like this. It's true. Um, but but tell us, uh, sorry, my question was like, how does it affect Everyone. each person differently? And yes. people need to be doing it on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly. And lots of people forget about it. So just tell us, after someone takes that exercise, that knowledge, how repetitive this has to yes. be done, and tell us more about it. So there is many different types of breath work, but uh, what you have just described was perfect. The thing is, what I do is... There is many techniques about breath work, but what I do, we call it more alchemia. Mm -hmm. I will reply to your question right after about the practice. And, uh, alchemia is basically this, ta this chair, this table, this light, your presence, my voice, every input makes you feel a certain way. Also, everything that is inside from your past traumas, the past life, or just from what you ate uh, at midday. All this information from inside and outside influence the way you feel. So every person coming for breath work will come with a different physiology, different hormonal state, or alchemia, or energy, if we want to use the spiritual world. So well, let's, let's give you an example. Let's yes. say uh, divorced, yes. whether a man or a woman, mainly women, because they're more emotional. So we have this category. We have another category where someone lost someone dear, a mother, yes. friends, some whatever. And we have another scenario where someone is totally lost in life and yes. anxiety is killing them. So let's talk about three examples, three, three guys, okay. three girls, whatever, laying next to each other, yes. how it goes. So it will go completely differently for everyone because can everyone... We, sorry to cut you. Can we make Freddy? Can we make him sleep here and make... Uh, with pleasure. Something? If you want, if you want, we can, <laughs> Freddy. <laughs> um, I hope you don't have too many traumas, otherwise you're going to have to cut. <laughs> He lives with me most of the day, so I'm sure he has lots of Full traumas. Of <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 I give you my card after, okay? <laughs> I'm making business. Um, it will happen differently for everyone because what happens is that once you reach a state of rest, when you're feeling safe, emotion can start to rise. So the one that has the divorce, the one that is suffering from different things will experience different emotions. And emotions... It's not something that you can list in a book. We can try our best to pack them together, but it's unique. It's shapeless, formless. So that's why when we are doing breathing, you have the woman at your left that's having an orgasm and the one at your right that is crying your whole life. Yeah. In both cases, it's fantastic. There is a text in the Bible that says, what you bring, bring forth will save you. What you don't bring forth is going to destroy you, which is expressing. Let go. Let it go, expressing. But it is so hard, Anthony, for people like us, even for me now, it is still hard to go deep into the letting it go and the emotions because we are just not used to it. We have not just been shaped to it. 
And for me, for example, I know that most of the time I need to be surrounded by someone that I truly see as a, as a strong figure. It could have been my cousin at that time, or Wim Hof, my mentor at that time, or this Milena, this woman I just mentioned. She was a very strong figure for me. I needed this strong presence. And I try my best for my participant to bring this strong presence with my beings. For some it works, for some it doesn't. I'm happy because for many it does. But many things will happen. The good news is that for each of them it's going to be a beautiful experience. Some, it will be fine. Then, to reply to your questions, they can just do a little bit at home. It can be 10 minutes in the morning just to have the right hormones. And they go on on their day. For some, it's like, okay, I have a lot of trauma. I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling depressed. I'm feeling lost. It's still there. They will have to come back to more expeditions and more workshops. Would it cure or it's just like... Uh, uh, Putting something on the wound, you know, like you trying to... Yes, to you choose. Some people will put that more on, the, on a nicotine patch, yeah. uh, like I come from time, sometimes to times to make feel better. And some will be like, okay, I'm going to heal myself. But it's a long journey. It takes time. And I believe that actually it's a journey of life because you can always go deeper. The good news is that, and I love that one. I think you're going to love it. I believe that traumas and wisdom are actually the same thing. They both come from an intense source of stress. But then the mind has two options. Or to look at this source of stress from the lens of fear and basically, oh, I'm not going back into this. So women start to cut emotions. They start to be afraid of men, for example. And men, the same with emotions. Or we look at it with the lens of faith. And it's like, okay, now I have experience into that situation. So when it's going to come again, I will be able to manage it better. The issue is that most people have never learned how to use this past stress and to use it with faith. Most of them fall into the fear. So it's, that's what I do. I just bring back the right mindset into towards the same thing, actually. The what is the same. It's just the how, how we look at it. Do you feel like the main issue in humans are their expectations? They ex expect to be born in an ideal world where they can be living an ideal life, where they would be having the ideal jobs and the ideal husband or, or woman and the kids and nothing will happen to them and they're going to grow old, all happy together. And this is the, the, the life scenario where they kind of uh -huh. like uh, dreamt of and their parents told them it's possible and you will do it because you are a great person, you're a great girl, you're better than others. Do you feel this is the expectation that since we are born that we are the best people on the planet and we're going to have the best life? And when they hit that age and life, egg, <laughs> give them that slap, <laughs> you know, like wake up. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, I, I think I'm going to say the same thing as you. So I will almost reply yes, but in a different way. I believe that all these expectations, they may not be the issue, but they may distract us from looking at, from looking at actually who we truly are. Because we believe that this is what we want. And that we get them or not get them, then we get still depressed sometimes. It happened to you, it happened to me. It's like some people don't even get them, so they're also depressed. So all these expectations, this setup of life, it's okay, it's there, it's fine, it's fun, it gives us some direction, it's okay. But the first step is who, who we are. I, even me, like after all these years, and I went fully into it, I still sometimes don't know who I am. And it's fine, it's okay, but I'm seeking. The good news is that this seeking process, it doesn't have to be done alone. And I feel, for example, on my side, I lost a lot of time in this journey because I, my ego was like, I'm Jesus, so I don't need anyone. And, I look like him, yeah. You can say that. I, I tried my best. <laughs> <laughs> I tried my best to fake it, you know. But you cannot fake it in this world. It's, uh, there is no shortcut. And I feel like just know a bit more who you are. And how do we do that? By going through experiences that are different, that are new, going a bit deeper, meeting different people, people that are stronger, that are harder. And that's also why I'm blessed to be with you today because I'm talking, but I'm learning. It's, it's, it's mutual. And trust me, it is. Question, what are the kind of questions that you start asking yourself and it will trigger your subconscious? <laughs> that, that, I love that <laughs> one. I still have sometimes the, am I, am I, am I, am I putting enough work? I, all the time, I'm like, am I your actually putting enough work? work. Yeah. It's always no. And the thing is like, in, in my field, I'm a very lazy man. Okay. I'm a very lazy man, but I'm, I'm efficient. So I'm able to accomplish a lot and then resting a lot, which 
so far that's why I have a, a lot of hair my, my body is, is, is feeling healthy I'm having a lot of rest which is fantastic uh, for what I do because I want to be also what I preach so I want to find this balance between hard work and success and healthy lifestyle and being so so far I'm feeling at peace with that but sometimes I'm like if I really want to spread the world with this philosophy this new philosophy am I putting enough work that's my my question that comes to my mind a lot and how do you tackle it do you have some kind of exercise you do or oh, I go sleep um, <laughs> um, so the way I tell you the way I do it That's and always I teach this in my academy and uh, for the one on one so I do something called self assessment and I learned this uh, from an old Japanese proverb that says that every human being has three faces so you have one face that you will use it in your corporate life which is the serious one And then you have the face which is a bit lighter that you use it with your friends and family and have fun. And you have your face that you only see it when you're looking at the mirror. And this is the true you. Yes. So, so all of us, we have three faces. Now, so the way I do my exercise is like, okay, I sit down and I do it in a way which is so broken down that I don't even give the chance to myself to play with it. So I do daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and yearly assessment. So Amazing. every night when I finish uh, all of my day, you know that people write diaries. Yes. I don't write diaries. I do video diaries. So I pick up the phone for one minute and I started talking about how my day was. And I say, you know what, like today I didn't put all of the effort, but it's going to go to tomorrow and tomorrow I'm going to achieve one, two, three, four. And when tomorrow comes and I see the video, if I don't achieve it, I will feel triple guilty. I'm yeah. like, you're getting lazy. Move your ass. So it's like a jump from Monday Very, to Tuesday, but yes. Wednesday, there is no point on earth. Yes. I'm not going to achieve all of this, even if I have to stay awake for 18 hours. doesn't matter. And then when the week finishes, I'm like, how was the week? And when I say what I'm doing, it's not like always related to how much money I made that day or that week, but that I put enough seeds for it to pay off after two weeks, three yes. weeks, one month, and this is what I see. And then, okay, like this week I trained six days in the gym. I was doing over one hour, which is perfect. I'm so happy with it. However, when it comes to my family connection, you know, I didn't give it much time. So which is the lowest point, which I need to work on it on a weekly. So once, because I believe in that when you're planning, everything that you're writing, you're triggering your subconscious when you're doing your planning. Okay. And when it comes to the self, uh, so this is the, my way I'm looking at the mirror by putting Very that good. video in front of me and I'm talking about it and I'm the only one who can judge myself and say, you know what, you have been a beast this week congratulation, you deserve whatever you want, or you know what, you don't even deserve to smile, go put in down the work. Very good. So this is my uh, my exercise, and if I hope you start doing it, and trust me, trust me, it's like you cannot fool yourself. You can fool the world by saying, I'm doing amazing, I'm the happiest, I'm the lightest, <laughs> but what's between you and no yourself, yes. like that's it. I'm learning, uh, Anthony. I'm really learning from you. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you. Tell me sharing. about your community. So you guys, do you have a community where you kind of meet locally yeah. or internationally? How does it go? How can someone join your program? Like, tell us more about it. So in Dubai, I think at the moment, we are over 500 people that we have met face to face in, uh, in uh, just six months, actually. So I'm pretty happy. Mm -hmm. um, so we are doing like workshops and, and events, but uh, we also do, once you are clients of that, once you came once, Uh, we do free gathering. So people just come, we do a little breath work, we connect because the goal here is to create a community <coughs> excuse me, of people that are like successful in business but also like-minded and uh, with a healthy purpose. So uh, we have actually now connecting people that start to be um, business partners, friendship, lovers. Um, so we have this free gathering. People come and they connect. Um, this happened once a month uh, in real life in Dubai. Otherwise, online, we also have an online presence um, that gathers all the community every Monday. Uh, we have a breathing for the one who are like members of our online program that uh, I can share somewhere. We have an online program 
guys, for, it's 200 euro and for the money, it's, it's priceless. Like, it's fantastic what we have created. Once you're part of that, we have a Monday breathing sessions. So everyone just gather online, we connect and we do retreats. I go for my winter retreat next week. That's there nice. is two retreats, one summer, one winter for the public. I do a lot of events private as well, but for the public, there is two. And uh, we go walk in the snow in shorts, barefoot, uh, a lot of breathing, a lot of We're uh, reprogramming. We're seeing the videos, yeah. It's, uh, it's I've been powerful. in snow. I don't know how you do it, but still. <laughs> Guys who are watching and Anthony, I promise I'm not a big fan of cold. I lived in Malta. As soon as I could leave France, Malta, Spain, Dubai, I love the heat. But I feel like, again, it's not about the what. Like, you, it's such a powerful tool. It's, it's, um, it's sad to not use it because it has so much benefits. To be very honest, I'll tell you something. So I was telling you about the experience of the breastwork, and that was exactly like 10 or 15 minutes prep before okay. us jumping into the ice press. Okay. And I was looking at all of this, and I was looking at this woman. I'm like, man, this woman are nuts, you know. And I was looking at people, like, how excited they are to, to jump in the ice bath. And I'm like, I'm on an island where I'm stepping on white sand, and I have the beautiful crystal blue beach in front of me, and Why? they're doing, uh, you know, like uh, kayaking and kiting, and all of this stuff is so nice, like the, the, the water sports, you know. And seeing these people doing the suffering and they were like, you know, you have to do this breast work before jumping into the ice bath. It will help you a lot. Like, okay, so I've done it. And, you know, I focused for five minutes and genuinely I felt I was floating on the, on the, I felt it. Amazing. Yeah, I felt so light. It's unreal. And then I started seeing people jumping. Okay, sorry. So they made this exercise for us, you know, where we have to put only our feet and uh, sorry, okay. our hands in the ice bath. And when I put it, they were like, no one pulls out. After 10 seconds, I was like, I this cannot is the do hardest. it. I Just cannot. The hand. I felt here like it's, it's someone is chopping my fingers, yes. you know. And then I started seeing these girls jumping in the ice bath. I'm like, fuck, it's so embarrassing, man. Like, there's no way I can be <laughs> the here. Ghost yeah. <laughs> and it's like, I have 35 people doing it, and I'm the, the only cover that didn't jump in it. And when I jumped in the, in the it was minus five. Man, I've never oh, had. So it cannot be minus five. Water it was minus five. But water turns to ice below zero. The water was minus five. So they put this temperature thingy and it has minus five. Maybe so they put salt. so we were bringing the ice bags, like the okay. big ones, and dropping it into water. And when it happened minus five, they told us this is the perfect degree to jump in it. Okay. 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 So Maybe it was mixed with the ice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah they were putting lots yeah, of yeah, yeah, okay, ice okay. bars, the huge okay. one, inside of a very big pool in order for it to yes. freeze. And when it <laughs> happened, they told us come in. So I still remember that I jumped in. And when I came in, I came in with a twisted uh, knee. Yes. So I wanted to push it forward. I couldn't. So my, my brain was giving the feet like push forward. <laughs> I couldn't. And for the first 45 seconds, it was hell. But after the 45 seconds passed, I felt so numb. I didn't feel anything. And when it became three minutes, they tell us all to jump okay. out of it. And I jumped out of it and I ran to the beach. And, <laughs> and the beach was so warm. It was like magical. <laughs> I remember that night, I swear by, I slept like an infant. It's like I came and I, I didn't turn left or right. I didn't have one dream. Switched that off. night, it was the most relaxing for my brain and for my body. And I started understanding it. Now, would I do it again? Mm, I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm kind of okay. But it's something seriously for people just to trust, uh, to, to try it once. And especially if you guys really use your body, if you are an athlete, if you are a football yes. player or whatever, this kind of uh, cold will help your muscle recover way quicker than the and regular um, ones. Th th that's a very good point. Uh, but I will go beyond is that the breathing and the ice both has many different dif benefits. But a big one that they have in common is that they lower the inflammation. And when you lower the inflammation, it triggers actually in the brain the the signals that you are more safe. So we come back to what we were talking about. And by doing these things, the inflammation is dropping because of the spike of adrenaline, whatever. So when you have lower inflammation, because your brain thinks that you're more safe, it starts to release serotonin, which is the hormone of happiness. So this has been also, in general, a few minutes after the ice bath. That's why there's this good hormone feeling. So this is amazing to feel more happy when you're depressed or you want less this little beer or this little joint because you feel already good. 
But more than that, I see more and more people that have 30 years old and they start to have autoimmune disease, this, which is linked to chronic inflammation. Okay. So by just doing breath work and like ice bath or just one of the two, it's fine. Because most of the people even here in Dubai they have dreams, so they don't want to slow down on work. So, okay, fair enough. You don't want to slow down on your, on your stress. I understand. Just implement a bit of breathing and ice, and you lower, it's going to lower your inflammation, and at least you avoid autoimmune disease. It would, be, it would be sad to create an empire, and then you cannot enjoy it, because at 40, you start to have skin issue, issue inside, you lose your hair. No, like, uh, not anymore. This is an issue from the past. And for women, this is called the free facelift, you know? So you start using it, the facelift, you know, when you <laughs> yes. put it in the, in the ice, you know, you're As getting well it. Works. Absolutely. Blue out. Yeah. Fenland, you speak a lot about love. You mentioned love here uh, more than 10 times. How did love affect all of this that you're doing and, fed and pushed you to way kind of to be spreading a message, a message of love? This guy is good, guys. I'll buy this book now for <laughs> real. Like, the, the best question ever. And he's looking, he's analyzing. Um, I believe that love is everywhere, by the way. Even when people are fighting each other, it's the case in many places in the world right now. It's just the absence of a certain amount of love. But it, it, hate doesn't exist. It's just lack of love. And love is what is keeping everything together. So you're saying hate is a reaction of love. It's a reaction of, of, of lack, a hurt lack love. Of yeah, of a hurting it, love, it let's can say. be aussi, yeah, yeah. also. Okay. It's like a lack of love. It's like at some point, people don't feel it anymore or not mm. enough and they start to, to, to fight. Or, but it's just a lack of love. Um, love is everything that keeps everything together. Even our cells. Our cells could live independently, but they choose to stay together for many different reasons to survive. And, and they create these living beings that looks like one, but actually we are billions of cells. And it's linked by love. What happened to me is that for most of my life, even even still now, from 13 to 26, I couldn't receive or give love, or not enough, because I was disconnecting from my emotions. So it's not even if there was or wasn't love, it's that I couldn't feel it. And the thing is, like, everything become pointless. For me, love now, Anthony, when I started to love myself, I'm like, my God, but look at you. Like, look at you. Like, I'm tall, I'm, I'm healthy, I'm able to speak, I mean... I'm in a safe country. I'm and born you in used France. to be Jesus as well. I used to be Jesus. <laughs> like, come on. Like, it's not that bad, you know? Like, fuck. And uh, I, I can swear a bit. Yeah, yeah no problem. I'm a, I'm a swearing Jesus. No problem. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, like, like, come on. And step by step also, I start to realize, okay, I can achieve things. And, and once the safe love start to come, finally, you can forgive. You can forgive others. And you can start to see others that they just try their best. And everyone around us. That's why I believe that we can criticize the world as much as we want, but the truth is most people will say oh, they should forgive each other, but they don't forgive themselves. Or people have hurt me so bad that I can forgive everything but not that person. No, no, no. Love is unconditional. Forgiveness is unconditional. It doesn't mean that you have to accept everything in your life. Of course not. Choose very wisely, but, but forgive because everyone is trying their best. Everyone is doing what they can with the knowledge of wisdom, of love, of energy they have. And once you know that deep inside your heart, you're at peace. Like, it's all good. It's all for me. It's all mine. And it took me a long time to realize it. It took me a long, long time. And it was painful, this journey. But now I see it. I see you guys, you know. We don't know each other, but we know each other. We are the same. We are one. It's, we are on the same vibration. The same. And even if we were not, you know, like, yeah. it's like, even if we were not, somehow we will be connected because somehow we would have met here so we would have found the reasons to be connected and, and i think we look the same much more than maybe we can see on the camera it's like i always have this idea i've never said it uh, out loud i'm saying it right now it's just like i feel that i don't know what's the number but maybe there is like out of eight billion people maybe there is like twenty thousand fifty thousand maybe a hundred thousand at its best that these guys are super vibrating somewhere else than the rest of the world <laughs> which is uh, held up in the rat race that's yeah. happening you know that all of their life they need to work until they're 64 and yes. retire, you know and they're kind of like all of them they're trying to find each other and if this happens it will be the strongest <laughs> union on the planet and and maybe it will flip all of the systems that we're living in maybe i'm crazy 
maybe that's an idea, but you never know if it happened, you're going to call me brilliant. <laughs> and, maybe, and you know, like some, maybe it's already happening. Maybe it's already happened. It is, maybe it is, it's already it happened, is. actually. Like we, we don't know. It, it, I also detach myself a lot from what is good, what is bad. And, and I really believe that the universe, God, the nature, the creation in itself is, is really perfect as it is. And if we all blow up tomorrow, uh, we all blow up tomorrow, it's fine. It was meant to be. The earth will still be here. Nature is okay. It's, Everyone, we say, because we can talk about our environment as well. When I moved to Dubai, wow, Anthony, the community, the spiritual community was like, oh, you go to Dubai, but it's not Are natural. Crazy? Are you crazy? Yeah, there's no trees. Uh, I'm, like, I'm like, guys, like, the earth is fine. You know, like the environment, when we say we help the environment for the planet, no, no, we do it for us as humans because we don't want to suffer from the cataclysmic uh, environment change. But the earth is fine. The earth is going to survive whatever it is. The earth sometimes it, she puts ice, ice all over the planet for 1,000 years, so the earth doesn't care. For us, for me, now I see everything as it should be, I guess, uh, at least I'm at peace with that. If we do something bad here, the good will come there. If we do some good here, bad will there. And if it's not the case, it doesn't matter anyway. Saif uh, Alpha, when I discovered you, Anthony, on the podcast, Big Love, uh, Saif, he asked me what is the definition of success, and I said, for me, it's just being at peace with the choices you're making today and for your future. And I think if, if we just do that, everything is going to be fine. There will still be murder, there will still be sometimes war, but everyone will be at peace with what you do. Sometimes it will be, sometimes we'll be at peace with doing war, but do it, brother. It's okay. It's your journey. And maybe you will realize that was not the right one. It's fine. So that's why now I'm sleeping like a baby at night. And uh, I don't that's know amazing. if I, I don't even know if I replied to your question, uh, Anthony. I'm sorry, I started to flow. No issues. Uh, tell me something, uh, which is gonna be like uh, maybe the final question. I don't know. Um, is it safe for everyone to do it, the breast work and the ice bath? Like anyone can do it at any age? Okay, I would say 99% of the people, yes. Um, for my side, of course, it's a business, so I also have to play safe. Ask your doctor if you have a doubt. If you're pregnant, I will not. Absolutely. I will not do it just for the safety of the, of the baby. There is no reason to not do it, but let's play anyway, it safe. Anyway, when you're pregnant, don't do anything. Exactly. Go sleep it until the baby comes exactly. and then come home. <laughs> 100%. You know, like nice blanket, <laughs> yeah, nice yeah, tea. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. just enjoy, make your li your husband's <laughs> life miserable. <laughs> exactly. You know? <laughs> exactly. 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 Lay on your husband. Yeah. He's gonna take care of you. Make sure for the next nine months, you know, it was his fault <laughs> of this. <laughs> exactly. He has to know. He has to know. <laughs> But yeah, 99% of the people can come from any age. I had people from over 90 that had like tubes instead of veins or a pacemaker. It's all good wow. and I can tell you why uh, with that is that it is not the activity the danger it is how you react to it so as long as you feel more or less at peace you are going to be fine all right amazing if someone wants to come you know to see what you're doing kind of like having a free sample or just to, yeah. to experience this tell us where they can find you how are you placed in Dubai and which days and time thank you Anthony yeah absolutely there is uh, you can type Ferdinand Thor, if you want. Ferdinand Morelek, as well, is my real name. You can type Tribe, Superhuman, Tribe Dubai, you will find us. Um, there is like free sample as well of audio of breathing sessions. You can have the online one as well. Um, I do events at least, I try my best to do one public event per month. Okay. Otherwise, I do a lot of private sessions, uh, B2Bs we were talking about. Um, send me a message, send on WhatsApp. We have, we have contacts everywhere. I'm very reachable. I always reply. I take time sometimes, but I do reply. So reach out, whatever, Instagram, WhatsApp, uh, Gmail, Google, the website, I will, I will let and you. And you do this for individual people and you do this for corporate, for companies. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, it started at the beginning, the reputation that we had is that we make billionaires cry because <laughs> everyone that was coming to us was people with a certain status and they were all crying and crying because they had so much on their shoulders. But now we are slowly moving to B2B as well. So if you're a company and you want from um, improving the performance of your team, lowering the stress, lowering the stress, or just team building as well, I can take care mm, of that. Means if they are not that productive before firing them, exactly. try, try Ferdinand exactly. for, for one time. And before then the whip, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, exactly. Try me once. Thanks a lot for this. This Thank has you. been amazing. Thank you for coming and wishing you the best of luck in your career. You're Thank doing an amazing Thank difference. You very much. And I'm so happy to be having this session with you. Thank you. Thanks Anthony. a lot. You heard that, guys. Reach out to Ferdinand. We're going to be putting all of his credential details in the description below. So reach out and 
why not? Maybe it's time for you to have a change. Thank you for watching this episode. See you in the next one. Thank you.